so hello guys hello let's go so our topic for today is apparently type transformations in typescript as we know typescript is a superset of a javascript it has got a high popularity in the world of the web development and not only there uh, do its ability to catch the type related errors errors during compile time and uh, that basically make uh, some more uh, advanced application in our daily basis as a developers. Uh, one of the fascinating feature of the TypeScript, in my opinion, uh, it's a power powerful type system. This type system allow us to develop uh, some uh, really interesting, uh, I don't know, types of our own types. Um, by our own, I mean utility types or type helpers. We will talk about this later on. So let's check the agenda for today. Um, uh, uh, let's move on with this one. Uh, basically, we will go through the basics and slowly pave the way to more advanced and text uh, techniques. I have break it down uh, main topics uh, to list an important features like utility types and type helpers, unions and indexed access, template literals and conditional uh, types infer keyword. Okay, we can move on to the next uh, slide. So what is a type transformation? Because uh, like many of us had heard about the TypeScript and types, but what is actually type tra transformations? And uh, let me answer this question. Uh, type transformation is uh, a TypeScript concept uh, that enables uh, us as developers to modify and manipulate types to suit our specific needs. It actually offer a versatile set of the tools for creating complex and exp expressive type definitions. And simply it opened the door to writing safer and more concise code. Uh, to understand type transformation even uh, more effectively, we first uh, examine some basics of the TypeScript type system uh, and then gradually progress toward the more advanced concepts. We will explore common use cases and some real uh, world examples as real as I can explain. Um, illustrating how type transformation can be powerful tools in the quest of the type safety, con con uh, consciousness and maintainability. By the end of this essay, I would say, I hope we will have a comprehensive understanding of how to use type transformations in the TypeScript to basically make um, your life a bit easier uh, so let's go. Uh, yeah, TypeScript transformation as simply as it is refers to the process of modifying or creating new types based on existing types. Uh, yeah, let's go. Uh, what is the next? Let's get started. Basically, if it's a placeholder, it means that we uh, past the introduction part and now we uh, like taking a deep breath preparing and let's uh, jump right into this so uh, the type of operator uh, basically there are like two cornerstones of the types and type type transformation and everything I believe based on, on this like two keywords it's type of and k of uh, so TypeScript uh, system provides uh, this es essential features uh, or operators 
these operators allow us to extract and manipulate types. I'm talking about the type of, basically it's standing for extracting the types from the objects, variable, function, whatever. Um, making it easier to work with the complex data structures and uh, like kind of enforce the like safety in, in the code. Uh, I'm talking about type of. Uh, on the other hand, key of is used to extract the keys, like property names, uh, uh, like from the object or interfaces. This particularly useful when we want to define generic functions. Uh, but generic functions functions is a like another topic, and, and I believe we can talk about this later. Uh, because our main goal is a type transformation for today. Uh, so moving on with key of uh, keyword. Uh, basically, it allows us to extract the keys. We can uh, we can take it as a, how to tell it easily, uh, like for in loop in the like regular JavaScript because we iterating over the uh, properties with for in you can imagine that key of simply does the same if we're talking about uh, TypeScript. Uh, so here we have a few examples of using of, type of uh, keyword. What is it basically does? It basically extracting out the type of the variable. In this scenario, it's S. Uh, this is really like simple example just to get some understanding. And uh, you can see there is a utility type, utility type has used uh, as a return type. Basically it's return, it's built in utility types. First of all, we will talk about utility types later. It allow us to return type of the function. Uh, I believe that's it, and we can move on to like some of the. Um, I believe it's a really important thing to understand, like type inference in the TypeScript, and uh, what is it? A type inference is um, basically like internal mechanism. Uh, and it's crucial aspect of the type transformation in TypeScript and most interesting one. Uh, type inference basically simplified the code by reducing the need of the explicit type annotations. What does it mean? Uh, basically, TypeScript is smart enough to extract the types from the, uh, like, identifiers, notations from the uh, from the context as well. So basically it's the internal mechanism which uh, make uh, like code safer or I don't know, which make the TypeScript smarter, you can say. And uh, uh, type inference system, it's, I, I can call it the system, analyze like our code to determine most appropriate types for variables and functions. Return values based on their usage and context. Yeah, I, as I mentioned, uh, there are like few, um, few like ways to TypeScript to infer the uh, to infer the types, yeah. So this is a like basic usage on this uh, screen, like basic scenario, and I will try to explain the type inference now. Uh, we don't have any type uh, for x uh, identifier or variable. It's basically equal three, but somehow TypeScript able to understand what is the type of this variable. It's automatically inferred and uh, its its state uh, is a number, like actually the type is a number. Uh, so 
that's I, I believe that's a most important thing to uh like to understand and to to grasp on. Uh, just to mention a few points about type inference uh, uh, in context of type transformation, why it's important. Because like, as I mentioned, there might be implicit type assignment when we declare a variable without specifying its type. And TypeScript basically in, inferred the type based on assigned value, as we see on this slide. Uh, Let's move to some other example. It's contextual typing. And it's also the part of the type inference mechanism. Uh, content uh, contextual typing uh, basically use context in which variable or expression is used to determine its type. That's the fun. This allow for more precise type information, especially in case like function parameters or turn values. Uh, and as a code uh, example, uh, like you can see, we have some on mouse down defined, uh, but actually it's assigned, we assign the function um, object to it and if you try to like to find the property button, most probably you will find it uh, if it's the TypeScript file, uh, because TypeScript infer this button property from the mouse event. Uh, but if you want to uh, like uh, get some other stuff like kangaroo, it's impossible, and you most probably. Uh, TypeScript start yelling at us, like saying like property kangaroo doesn't exist, come on. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, really cool stuff what uh, TypeScript is doing under the hood, this type inference. Um, so what else uh, regarding type inference? I believe, um, I believe that there are some more uh, key points like union and intersection types uh, like uh, and the type transformation uh, as itself because type inference often work hand in hand with the transformations um, as we manipulate types or define some custom types typescript inference system adapts the new type information maintaining type safety i mean like it's it's complicated and, and most probably you are overwhelmed with this um, words but uh, in in case of type transformation type inference basically help to like to extract these types and like create new types uh, from the uh, from the old types, I don't know, from existing, new types from existing. Uh, and now we are moving to next feature. Uh, it's the utility types. Uh, I believe that, I believe that uh, uh, many of us were using utility types, which is a built-in uh, functions, uh, of, sorry, built-in features of the TypeScript. Uh, we will discuss how these types uh, of like utility types can save the time, reduce uh, code redundancy and improve maintainability. Uh, we will also dive into built-in utility types, not all of them, uh, but very, very few. I, I believe few of them uh, because I'm not going to cover uh, all, all of utility types. Um, uh, what else? Um, let's maybe uh, read the definition uh, for utility types. What are utility types? Basically, uh, utility types in TypeScript are built in generic types. Uh, and uh, what they give us, they give us like predefined way to transform the types. They provide convenient tools for modifying 
filtering and transforming existing types without the need to rewrite custom type definition from scratch. Utility types are like uh, pre-baked functions for working with the types, uh, making our code more concise, readable, and maintainable. I believe for folks who are using the TypeScript in their daily basis, it's like number one uh, tool to use. And uh, me personally, I'm also using this, uh, like this feature provided by the TypeScript. And TypeScript with its strong static type system uh, basically provide uh, this um, like this utility types from the first version of release, like getting back uh, to version 2.8 or even early. So the utility types are here for quite a long time. And if you are not using it, that's at least a good point to start using them. Uh, okay. Uh, maybe some i don't know before we start to dip uh, to dig into the code sorry uh, i would like to take some some uh, like more background on the utility types uh, as i mentioned as they are kind of generic types in typescript uh, and i would say they are kind of a swiss army knife for working with the types, offering like big arsenal of tools for common type transformation. We can say that utility types is a kind of uh, like type transformation tools as well. Uh, they provide elegant uh, solution for sol solving complex type related problems without need for writing custom, custom type declaration from scratch. So basically they make our life as developers easier. Uh, and uh, now I think we can move on and review um, and review the code itself. I want to list some popular utility types and scenarios where we might use them. Uh, first one is going to be pick. Uh, Basically, we provide the type uh, that we want to make pick from, and we provide the keys that we'll, we would like to uh, to basically pick by. As, uh, as an example, we have interface user with ID and name and email properties. And what we basically want, uh, we we just want to create a new type or we just create the new type user summary where we pick in only uh, ID and name. And yeah, you see, we are using another feature uh, as a union. We pick in with the union here. We will uh, talk about unions later on. Uh, so now let's uh, review, exclude the type helper, uh, sorry, uh, utility type. I am I might uh, mix this uh, type helpers and utility types because they are really similar, at, at least for me. So let's focus on exclude. Uh, basically, we need to provide the type to exclude the utility type, and we need to provide uh, the excluding or excluded union. So as an example, we have a like union on, on the colors and we would like only to, um, yeah, I, I see the mis misspelling, like exclude and extract. So it's going to be exclude. So we're going to exclude. So in case we're going to exclude, then we most probably end up with the uh, yellow. Uh, but if you want to extract, we we end up with red, green, and blue. Yeah, sorry for mistake on this one. Uh, uh, definitely, I need to review and change the slide. Uh, this one. Um, but nevertheless, let's move on to the next uh, 
utility type is a record. Uh, me, like personally, I, I'm often using the record type. Uh, it's uh, mm, how to tell it. It's kind of a map. Uh, like if, if you compare it to the usual regular JavaScript, it's kind of a map. So what we basically can do with record uh, utility type, we can provide the keys of the map, for example. In this example, it, it might be the union, apple, banana, or orange. And uh, we can provide the value of this type. Now we strictly set it to the number. So any apple, any banana, or orange is going to be number. Okay. Uh, Okay, okay, all right. Uh, and that's it. I will not focus on all utility types, as I mentioned, because it takes us a really uh, long time. Uh, basically, we can just to we can uh, just sum up uh, when to use utility types, uh, when we need to create new types that are based on existing types. Uh, with some modification or slight modification when we want to ensure that our code uh, remains type safe uh, while reducing non-needed or redundancy uh, code. Uh, when we have some common type operation that occur throughout our code base and we want to simplify them, like as I uh, previously showed, we can exclude something uh, uh, or we can omit some properties from the interface or, or type. Uh, then when we want to improve code readability and uh, express our intentions um, more clearly, mm, how to say, uh, how to express more clearly when we write the code, it's, it's clear, I believe. And uh just to mention uh, uh there is a link to utility types uh, and i encourage you to follow the link and check it out there are more utility types for you they are built in ready solution just go read uh, like try to embrace them try to understand how to use them because there are uh, pretty good examples uh, of the usage. So just go and check. Yeah, so we we are moving on. Uh, next uh, uh, next topic is the type helpers. So um, how to say it properly? From, like from my opinion, the types type helper is an approach to build um, custom utility types. It's like kind of a pattern. Uh, so I'm still not sure about naming for this one, but yeah, type helpers as an approach to build our own types, like built-in utility types. And like, let's fix on, on this idea. Yeah. So uh, like real example, let's maybe turn the uh, let's turn the maybe type in, into a type helper. Uh, let's imagine we have a type uh, which is maybe. And now we, like I'm talking about very first line, now we move into the second line of example and apparently maybe become a generic type. Uh, I hope uh, some of you guys already familiar with generic because uh, I'm not going to stop on generics uh, and it's a separate topic. So let's go to third uh, line. Uh, we define the maybe type with extending the original generic type with null and undefined. Basically we provide kind of union and uh, we can even uh, like do our type helper uh, mod type safe and we like provide the constraint here 
so um excuse me mm, so we provide the constraint here uh, uh which basically saying the t type should extend uh string yeah it, it's basically extend the string so maybe string type now uh is a string null or undefined yeah because if we try to pass the number TypeScript will yell at us and, and tell, come on, you can't do this. You need to pass the string. And uh, let's see some really incredible things. Like, uh, let's look on the type, maybe not null, which basically extends uh, object literal. Yeah, it's it's an object literal. And what is happening here is a magic. Boom. Yes, that's that's uh, that's the magic, because empty object value has a specific use in TypeScript, and we can represent anything that is not null or undefined. TypeScript make structural compression when it checks the things which are assignable to each other, and the empty object says that the contract has been met. Uh, yeah, and basically it's okay. I mean, in TypeScript, like in JavaScript, string is it just an object? Yeah, it's just an object with various methods associated with it. Just in a, just like in a JavaScript, everything is an object. Array is uh, arrays are the object. Uh, like string is an object. We can add string of arrays that's assignable to an object. Uh, basically this type, uh, which has no properties is basically assignable to everything that isn't null or undefined. And that's just to keep in mind, uh, it has no properties. It's just simply, uh, object literal. Uh, yeah. And yeah, regarding the boom effect, well, falsy, uh, value here is still an object <laughs> and this is really really key part of understanding the fundamental bits of the typescript everything is an object you can use an empty object to represent anything that is not null or undefined that is the main point here okay uh because uh because I'm the front uh, end engineer and mainly I'm doing front end activities. Uh, uh, I just wanted to mention that we can see real world use case of the type helpers, for example, in Redux library. And uh, if you go and check the, if you follow the link, go and check, you will see that uh, there is a, a uh, reducer type or which basically represent the type helper it's also generic because we we basically what we can see here uh reducer has two generics uh, one called s and another called a and they have predefined or they have default values provided because s as a state uh might be anything and a extend the action uh, I don't provide a, a type for uh, action. You can follow the link and see this example by yourself. Uh, yeah, and just to mention that type helpers are everywhere. And once you or me need some more than utility types can provide, what you are going to do is to think, okay, I know that I can create a type helper. I hope uh, that that's helps. And now uh, we are moving towards the topic about unions and indexed access. Um, well, unions, uh, we were seeing unions before in the presentation in the co code samples. And I believe unions is a, is a um, important part of the TypeScript and uh, like type transformation as well. 
So in TimeScript, uh, a union represents a type that can hold values of multiple types. Yeah, it's, it's like dynamic, let's say. Maybe not that dynamic, but flexible. Unions are denoted by vertical bar sign, like vertical uh, bar between the type names. Um, yeah, uh, let's see maybe some example of unions. Uh, yeah, before this, uh, before the uh, reviewing the code sample, I just wanted to know that uh, unions uh, are used hand in hand with indexed uh, access, and that's why I, I just uh, like uh, in, in agenda, I mentioned the uh, unions and index type, but I started with the unions uh, because it's easier to understand. And uh, basically unions allow us to work with the variables of function parameters or like variables of type uh, that have a multiple, I don't know, multiple values or multiple types. They provide flexibility. Uh, to define our types with various, uh, with various, I don't know, scenarios, let's say. And now let's focus on the coded base or code that I have uh, prepared. We have the type pet, which basically might be a string or the number. Uh, yeah, it's it's the union, simple version, like most simple version of the union we can uh, assign to to the pet uh, uh, cat or like number value, but if we would like to assign the true, um, we are going to get an error, yeah, because yeah, we just defined that pet is a string or not a number. We, we can't basically assign that uh, Boolean variable. Uh, I hope this example helps. Uh, this is a very basic, and um, you referencing to, referencing to JavaScript itself, we know that object uh, type in TypeScript is like an object in JavaScript, yeah, and an uh, array type in TypeScript is uh, like an array in JavaScript, but what is equivalent in the uh, uh, equivalent of union type in JavaScript. So union types represent different possibilities your code might handle over time. So it's just different stuff that might be uh, assigned to the type, yeah? Uh, and now we are moving to next feature of the TypeScript, which is important in, in scope of uh, type transformation. <clears throat> uh, uh, yeah. First of all, as const uh, let us specify a type as an immutable and read only, meaning its value get inferred as their literal types. Uh, what it what it means basically, I I will try to explain, uh, because as const basically freezes the object values. Uh, and infer the literal types. Uh, it also adds read-only annotation to the object keys, which makes the properties immutable uh, like during the compile time. Uh, in other words, SCONS operator extract types from expression to match uh, its exact values. Uh, we will see some example later, but yeah, Mm, just to mention, uh, when you apply a SCONS to expression of value, TypeScript narrows the type of that expression to its most specific and literal values. It helps to ensure type safety by making it impossible to assign any other values to variable or property. But this assumption might be applied only uh, to compile time because uh, there is a trick. You still can 
uh, you still uh, can assign something to object properties of like or mutate the object properties it doesn't work as object freeze utility if you're familiar with object freeze so as cons is a kind of object freeze but on the type level yeah uh, uh, there is some uh, there are some uh, examples of using x uh, as const uh, and it's simple as it is basically we are saying that uh, array of days is const and what we get on the as a output is a literal uh, array of values and if we do the same trick with a person we have a exact literal values of the person and uh, just to note you see read only uh, flag applied to each property um sorry uh, i need to make a short break Okay, <clears throat> all right. Um, so that's it um, about Esconst, I think. And we can move on to next slide about indexes. Oh, sorry, about indexes access type. And uh, indexes access, indexed access is actually an interesting feature and uh, uh, me personally, I was wondering how how flexible is TypeScript with the feature it provides uh, that basically you can combine this index type with unions uh, and with other feature and you can come up with really, uh, really advanced uh, types or techniques to create these types. So regarding index access uh, types, it basically gives you ability to access a member of a type, a, an object value array, a member or class method or, or function method. And uh, yeah, basically I put them image T in, in the square brackets, like key, like key of T. Uh, yeah. and indexed access doing this uh, kind of dynamically. Uh, let's move on, maybe see some example, uh, because talking about index accesses without example is not that fun. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, so, uh, uh, as a simple example, uh, how it looks like, we have a new type, which is somehow uh, extracted from original type and key type, uh, type, type, type. I, I know that sounds uh, a bit weird, type everywhere, but uh, come on, we are working on the type level. Uh, uh, and... Uh, basically maybe uh, see some basic index access example. Uh, we have an interface person and we have few properties. It's a name and age. Name is a string and age is a number type. And we have name type. And what we are trying to uh, do using index access, we're trying to extract the type of the name property. So what is a, what is happening here? Uh, basically, we're saying, okay, let's take the person and let's uh, check the type or let's extract the type from the person using using the key. Like we are using key in this example as a name. Uh, so uh, this equivalent to type name type string, that's a very true. Comment is a uh, helpful. Um, now, what is another trick uh, of uh, index access is a dynamic property access. We can actually dynamically uh, 
extract the type. Um, yeah, uh, as, as I mentioned, remember type inference mechanism? Yeah, the property name is going to be string automatically. And uh, if we look on the uh, line where we define person property type, we're basically getting type out of the property name, which is string. And then trying to uh, like trying to extract the string. But uh, for you who is following like uh, following me, you must probably see that there is a error that will be produced by the, this line because there is no string property on the interface person. Yeah, but uh, nevertheless, this example is still valid. And uh, I don't know if I has, have prepared the... Um, no, I don't. But anyway, if, for example, we want uh, dynamically uh, dynamically take all uh, values from the array with indexed access, we basically like uh, write an array square brackets and put the number type in the square brackets, which is automatically extract all the values from the array. Uh, okay, let's uh, uh, hold for the moment. Now we uh, examining some advanced uh, use case of indexed access. Uh, we have the uh, fake data result uh, constant here as a as a like main uh, type uh, like um, type source, uh, and now we extract type of from the fake data results, what what we basically do in, uh, uh, in the line where we define fake data, we're basically saying, okay, I need type of this fake data result. Okay, you have it, saying as TypeScript, and now we can use this fake data to dynamically access the properties of uh, fake data type. You see, the fake data square bracket string is a string type. The fake data boolean is a boolean type. And uh, I believe that we are covered with indexed access now. Um, yeah, let's move on. Unions, yeah, that's time for the unions. Uh, I believe I need to speed up a bit. Mm. Uh, unions, unions, unions. Okay. Uh, I would like to put uh, like our previous uh, uh, our previous knowledge together. Like uh, we can uh, see on this example, for example, we <laughs> for this code example, uh, we have a fruits uh, tuple uh, or array with s const notation and we can extract now some like dedicated fruits like we or we want only apple or banana so we pick what we need with the unions so you can see i uh, in this example i'm uh, basically picking uh like apple or banana with a uh, union here uh i can uh, yeah, I can pick all of them using dynamic indexed access. As I mentioned, like we have array, we have square brackets, and we basically get in all the fruits here. Um, yeah, we can even build the union from object values. Let's say we want to uh, create type, which is which contains only offline lections because if you take a look on lection map we have a group we have individual and we have we have online webinars and we have s const here just to just pay attention to this one and what we are going to do is basically create new type offline lections we are going to use exclude utility type we extract key of type lections map 
and we provide like directly what we want to e extract and we extract in only online webinars and we end up with the offline lections which is group or individual and uh, yeah i believe that's it regarding index access um yeah time for coffee no guys just hold on stay stay a bit uh, uh let's uh, put all knowledge that we got so far and prepare so, for some real world example let's say uh, uh, you're walking to the office and you want a coffee but you are running a bit late and now you need to make a choice you see the coffee shop and do you enter and uh, like buy or grab a coffee or do you go straight to the office and make coffee in the office? It's like, it's your choice. Uh, you the per person and you, you choose what you want. So uh, let me maybe have, oh, make it a shorter. Sorry for formatting, I, I missed this one. So the real world uh, example is next. Uh, we are uh, basically have the function walk to the office and this function uh, like uh, can take uh, one parameter is an action which is union of uh, grab a coffee or keep walking like skip the coffee and we have some transitions we might be late or on time for the work for the meetings and uh, yeah we extract exact literal types from the transition. And then as um, as a result of our interaction or as of our activity, like we walk into the office, we get in um, like transition value using indexed access. So in this case, it might be late or on time. It depends on us. Yeah, so if we decide to grab a coffee, then we must probably be late. Otherwise, we will be on time. And come on, you can still make the coffee in the office. Uh, yeah, uh, and this is a real world uh, example. Uh, uh, what uh, what to move on, or maybe uh, yeah, template literals. Another another good topic. So what are uh, template literals in the TypeScript. Uh, template literals types let you express dynamic strings in the TypeScript. Template literals are defined using backticks as delimiters like a uh, regular JavaScript. So uh, we would say that uh, template uh, literals also know as in the template string literals and uh, what else? Uh, basically, let's take a look on the next slide. Template literals in TypeScript, also known as a template string literals, a feature that allow us or you to create strings with embedded expression and multiple line text in a more concise and readable way. So uh, let's focus on the like embedded and expression and multi-line so ex embedded expression what i mean by this uh, basically we uh, kind of uh, close or embed uh, expression using template literal later I, I will show you and multi-line is it exactly same as in regular javascript when we have string literals as a multi-line like defined is a multi-line literal so uh uh, let's move further with some uh, practical example. Uh, yeah, basic template uh, retail literals uh, as simple as it is. Greeting, hello, and name. And apparently we will have hello, Alice. So name is a string. We use this name as a variable, but it might be the type because like I'm uh, explaining from the JavaScript side, and now we will try to apply the same pattern to the TypeScript. And if you take a look on the line with the type pass, basically pass can accept the type, bingo. 
So as, uh, as you most probably understand, the string literals operate on the JavaScript level with variables, but template literal on the TypeScript operates on the type level. Yes. Okay. Uh, I know it's a bit complicated, but please focus on this one. I will try to explain. So uh, let's imagine we have a pass, all possible paths in our uh, roads, like users, uh, user with parameter and post. And let's say we want to extract or we want to take only this path, which simply contains the like dynamic parameters. And what we are doing here, we provide uh, utility type extract with a, a template literal. And it represents uh, in the bold, like usual uh, a string literal with a string, uh, colon string. And what we will have uh, is a basically all the paths uh, which is matching this template literal. I mean, users slash ID and post ID. Uh, like moving further with the with the template literals and unions and all stuff together. Uh, let's say we want to make the sandwich. Uh, we have a bread type uh, described by union, filling type described by um, some tasty stuff like cheese, ham, and salami. And we can basically create a new type with all the sandwiches. And what is really, really interesting, all sandwiches type will contain all possible, all possible uh, options. Uh, and we can even move further and prepare some breakfast type, which operate uh, on the bread type and uh, basically make sandwich or baguette depending on like on on the our choice yeah so uh that's a really interesting uh and uh what is the trick here inside template literal we can also inline other union if you want to like in breakfast uh, type keep in mind that this additional union exponentially increase the number of prenumeration so it's kind of similar to to all sandwiches but it's even further pollute our type with all possible sandwiches and baguettes i hope you get it uh, uh, so the big takeaway here uh, we are basically just passing a union type into template literal and it automatically expand and give us back a union type. Yes, yeah, so, uh, yeah. Maybe this slide will explain you even better, uh, kind of advanced usage, but it's the same old template literal. And uh, for example, we want to uh to combine all the tasty stuff with the filling uh, and what we are doing basically adding the tasty and it add all the uh all the way it add the tasty prefix to all the possible combination of bread type and filling uh so you can see an example of object keys uh, we uh, provided a template literal and we, as a record, we, okay, sorry for misleading, but object of keys is actually a record which hold uh, strings with all possible uh, uh, type of the bread type and feeling. And we basically add the prefix of, of tasty. Uh, like on the... I don't know if you see of, on the second part of the screen on the bottom side, typed object of keys basically represent part of the possible uh, keys uh, of, the, of the map. I know it's a bit complicated and overwhelming. Maybe my example is not 
simple enough, but this is advanced um, advanced feature. And it's kind of hard to explain you in other way. Mm, okay, okay. Uh, so now let's uh, talk about conditional types. Uh, let's check it out. Um, conditional types are a powerful and advanced feature that allow us to create type definitions that depends on the condition or set of conditions. That's the very true. Uh, and let's examine some examples. Oops. Um, yeah. It's impossible to like basically explain you about conditional types without talking about extent keyword, uh, which is used to test if a type extends another type or meet specific conditions. I would say it's a kind of type matcher. So it it tried. We we were seeing extents before. It's what it's basically doing. It's tried to match if, for example, if T extends array. Yeah, array of any, and if it if it is, then we basically give out like uh, provide the true. Otherwise, it it's a false. So, uh, yeah, you can see uh, is array of a number is a false, and array of the string is a true. Why it's so? That's interesting. So. Uh, uh, in this example, type checker uh, basically checks whether it extends an array and produces Boolean results. Mm hmm. Great. Now we know <laughs> what what this extend keyword means in context of conditional types, uh, but we still don't uh, don't know why result. Uh, to produce the true. Uh, so I, I uh, encourage you to follow the link I have provided. There is a link to TypeScript Playground so you can go and see to not focus on this one. So we can move further because we are running out of time. Uh, yeah, and let's focus on the basic conditional types for now. Uh, basically, uh, Let's examine this one. Let's break down uh, this uh, expression and explain how conditional type works. Uh, so uh, conditional type uh, is a type or, uh, or type expression that we want to evaluate based on condition. So as a, as a previous slide, like intro slide say, if at night we won't go to sleep. So if condition condition type extends check type, if it meets the checker, then we provide some, uh, I don't know, true type or false type. If it doesn't, uh, simply explaining this stuff. So it's kind of, if, if we look on the regular JavaScript, it's kind of if else statement, to be honest, there is no mag magic here. And uh, yeah, let's move to infer. Uh, I believe uh, hmm, this is uh, very last uh, slides. And infer is a like we we slowly moving to the end, and we slowly moving to the more uh, advanced topics. And uh, I will try to explain infer keyword. The infer keyword in TypeScript is used in the context of conditional types. It allow us to infer or capture the type of a specific part of a type into a named, named variable. It's hard to embrace, I know. Yeah, and uh, please follow the link. Uh, you will find some more uh, information from the uh, official documentation. So let me uh, uh, put the metrics on the JavaScript to, like or make introduction to explain in fair like simply. Uh, for example, we have a string and we want to extract uh, each uh, 
each part of the string for whatever reason we want. Just just imagine. I know the example is uh, doesn't meet with real uh, world scenario. Just imagine we want to return each item, and uh, if you uh, look at the very uh, last line of the code, which is type result equal type of function extends uh, function, basically function with all possible arguments with a array of arguments of any. And then we see the infer uh, keyword and error. So wh wh what is uh, what is uh, happening here? Uh, basically, uh, uh, t is a type parameter that we provide and function signature that represent the function itself and infer error is where infer comes into play. So if I was talking about replace and getting the item from regular JavaScript, the infer doing the same on the type like level. Uh, but infer also allow us to name the variable. So we basically with infer we are saying, okay, give me this, uh, give me this return type uh, as an error. And if basically if extend much or much the much the whole expression, we infer error like return result and get it back. Otherwise, we can return zero, or otherwise we can uh, return the never. But it's another topic to discuss. Uh, I hope you get it. Uh, if not, uh, yeah, I, I will try to explain it in more details. Uh, yeah, uh, here is how the infer keyword works. As I mentioned before. Uh, 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 really a uh, tough time to explain. Uh, yeah, and I see we're getting running of time. So in summary, uh, if you take a look on the code, uh, that would be great if you can understand. Otherwise, I will tell you in summary that extract written time use conditional type with infer to capture uh, and then return type of the function provided to the type parameter. Uh, basically, it demonstrates uh, how we can dynamically extract the return type of the function, making our code more flexible uh, and maybe type safe, uh, especially when we work with the function, uh, which might return uh, like various type of uh, various type basically. Okay, guys, uh, I know it might be overwhelming. Uh, yeah, but hold on. Let's have some fun with the knowledge that we gained so far. Uh, I promise you this is going to be the last slides of today's presentation. Yeah, uh, we are going to improve our helpers and yeah, add some conditional logic to it. Uh, so let's say we want to define the type greetings, uh, which basically provide us back the greeting depending on the on the circumstances. I, I don't know. Let's say you are going your your um, usual uh, work day and you meet some someone and, and uh, you want to produce the greeting. Yeah. If someone saying you buy or like you live in the office and saying buy, uh, it's it's basically saying you buy. Otherwise it's saying you hi or hello. So what we can see here, we have um, uh, greetings uh, generic type, which basically have a type checker, extends hello. And if it's extends, we basically provide the uh, hi. And otherwise we say in buy. So this is, uh, the, this is what type buy and hi is doing, basically providing the greetings depending on the circumstances. And now uh, we can uh, see the we can see the gap because if we say anything uh, a part of hello, we will have a buy. So uh, yeah, 
so uh, we will add or we will improve it a bit more or we will add a conditional logic here like um nested conditional logic because we can you see we can nest our conditional logic even more and that's a really cool stuff i know there is no limit how many condition types you can stack you in fact can add some more and uh, some complicated libraries already use this huge stack of conditional if you open the source and see uh, which is drive a lot of complex logic in this uh, libraries so it's pretty useful uh no never this time uh yeah sorry uh i i have i have i had no time to talk about never i believe we can uh get right into it later once i prepare some more uh materials mm, let's keep it for now and let's have some fun with knowledge that we already gained for example we want uh uh, we want uh, to extract part of the data from existing type, yeah? Uh, for example, we have a tuple or tuple of the best authors of the book, of the books about JavaScript. And here we use conditional check. We'll look on this type, uh, get author's uh, uh, share name. And here we using conditional check. Also, uh, also we are using uh, template literals. Uh, uh, <laughs> the infer uh, is a string uh, basically in, in this line. Okay, mm. let me focus and try to explain it better. So here we use a conditional check to check that T is a string uh, with two strings uh, with a space between. Then we infer the strings in those slots using infer keyword. We could just simplify it a bit. And if we interested only in sure name, we uh, like we extract only last name. And that's the trick. Basically, we have combined conditional type, template literals, and infer in one uh, in one uh, type, like get our author's short name. It does work. All this uh, TypeScript code is legged. You can go and check the samples if you want to. And I think that's it for today. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, I think that's it regarding type transformation and mostly the pieces of, about this uh, tra type transformation. In conclusion, as we already saw, TypeScript offer a big or rich set of features and tools for creating and manip manipulating types, making it powerful and flexible language uh, for us to use uh, and uh, yeah, by understanding this like concept approach, um, like type transformation, we can write um, more robust and adaptable dynamic code and types in our TypeScript projects. And um, I know that I didn't cover this uh, topic fully, so there is place to improvement. And yeah, I will go to the uh yeah time to question i will go to the details maybe when with another presentation yeah